At the beginning of 239 AD, an imperial edict reached the Grand Commandant of Wei, Sima Yi, urgently recording him to Luoyang. Sima Yi foresaw that the state was on the verge of a crucial change. On his deathbed, Emperor Wing of Mei entrusted his eight-year-old adopted son, Cao Feng, to the shared regency of General-in-Chief Cao Shuang and Grand Commandant Sima Yi. Cao Shuang was a member of the Imperial clan. Sima Yi was a trusted official who had served three emperors of Wei. By appointing them as co-regents, Emperor Ming hoped that his state would remain stable. He could not have foreseen the crisis that was about to unfold, a crisis that would instead undermine the state of Wei. The man who would provoke the crisis was none other than Sima Yi. Supported by Cao Shuang and Sima Yi, the young Cao Feng acceded to the throne. But a contest of wills ensued. Cao Shuang was in charge of court affairs, and Sima Yi took control of the military. This made Cao Shuang uneasy, so he promoted Sima Yi to the position of Grand Tutor, in effect depriving him of military command. Moreover, Cao Shuang put his three younger brothers and certain trusted followers into key positions. He closely watched Sima Yi. Cao 这个实际上就给曹爽吃了一剂范金王 Although Cao Shuang thought he had outmaneuvered Sima Yi, it was in fact he who had been deceived. A decade later, at the beginning of 249 AD, General-in-Chief Cao Shuang and his three brothers accompanied the nominal Emperor Cao Feng on a trip to pay respect at the tomb of Emperor Ming, about 40 kilometers from Luoyang. The ritual proceeded with majestic music and a sonorous eulogy. Cao Shuang never suspected that Sima Yi had long awaited just such an opportunity. With Cao Shuang out of the capital, Sima Yi made a miraculous recovery from his illness and staged a coup. For 10 years, Sima Yi had secretly kept and trained a private army of 3,000 men. Now they seized the arsenal and all of the key ministries. In the name of the Empress Dowager, Sima Yi filed several charges against Cao Shuang, forcing him from power. 政变是如同惊雷一般突然发生不知非常严密令曹爽完全措手不及到了这个节骨眼上就可以见出曹爽和司马懿完全不同的性格和才干司马懿蓄谋已久布置严密而且手段老辣当消息传来的时候曹爽又惊又怕差一点从马上掉下来了 coup took Cao Shuang's clique by surprise They could either hand over military power or mount resistance At this critical moment Cao Shuang hesitated 
An emissary from Samayi talked him out of fighting back and led him to believe that, at worst, he would be removed from office. So Cao Shuang admitted to Samayi's charges and surrendered, thinking that he could still live a luxurious life in retirement. However, his opponent was not so benevolent. In short order, he had the Sao brothers and their supporters executed and their families with them. The Sema clan's seizure of power in the state of Wei is remembered as the incident at the Gaoping tombs. Ichazibata after the Gaoping tombs incident, the Surma clan had total control over state affairs. When Surma Yi died in 251 AD, his son Surma She became general-in-chief, further consolidating the clan's power at the Wei court. In December 254 AD, Surma She forced Cao Feng to abdicate and made 14-year-old Cao Mao emperor. When Sermon Shi died in 255 AD, his brother Serma Zhao maintained the clan's control over Wei and made no effort to hide his ambition to usurp the throne. To him, Emperor Cao Mao was a mere puppet. However, to everyone's surprise, this frail but determined emperor, who enjoyed poetry, calligraphy and painting, did resist the Serma clan. Cao Mao's remark that everyone on the street knows what's in Soma Zhao's mind became proverbial for something being an open secret. In May 260 AD, tired of simply waiting to be deposed, Cao Mao bravely led hundreds of guards and attendants from the palace to attack Soma Zhao. He died in the attempt. Sama's death marked the failure of the Wei imperial family's final attempt against the Sama clan. However, Wei had ambitions to unify all of China. Now in control of Wei, Sama Zhao launched a grand strategy, first to conquer Shu and then Wu, thereby ending the tripartite division of the fallen Han dynasty. Sumajo 决定伐蜀。The state of Shu in present-day Sichuan province was a land of abundance. People still live comfortably in the area today. Late in the Three Kingdoms period, Sema Zhao eyed Shu's rich and abundant land. But the Shu imperial court was oblivious to Wei's ambition. After decades of vigorous efforts by its founder, Yu Bei and Chancellor Zhuge Liang to build a strong state, Xu enjoyed political and social stability. The inept new emperor, Yu Shan, did not realize that his state was mired in turmoil. In 253 AD, Xu's general-in-chief, Fei Yi, was assassinated at a banquet by a Wei defector. His successor, 
Jiang Wei launched a series of mostly ineffectual campaigns against Wei that left him with fewer than 10,000 men. Meanwhile, Yu Shan dismissed Zhuge Liang's advice to favor virtuous ministers and alienate petty and corrupt officials. Instead, he allowed the eunuch Huang Hao and Cheng Zhe, prefect of the Masters of Writing, to dominate both the court and the state, which quickly sank into chaos and corruption. In 263 AD, Yu Shan enjoyed a visit to the famous 500-year-old irrigation project at Du Zhengyan. Paralyzed by domestic problems, Shu court officials lost any ambition to compete with Wei for the unification of the Three Kingdoms, leaving the path open for Sima Zhao's conquest of Shu. In Wei, Sema Zhao appointed Zhong Hui as general who guards the west to manage the Guangzhou region and prepare to invade Shu. In Shu, Zhang Wei urged Liu Shan to take precautions against Wei, while Huang Hao put his trust in the fortune teller's predictions that Wei would not invade. Meanwhile, Wei's invasion planning was well advanced. Zhong Hui, with 100,000 men, was to attract Guangzhou Commandery. Ding Ai, with 30,000 men, was to tie down Zhang Wei's main force. And Zhuge Shu, inspector of Zhongzhou, was to lead another 30,000 to strike Zhang Wei from the rear. In 263 AD, Sima Zhao launched his three-pronged offensive. But it ran up against a key Shu defense, the Jinmen Pass, which proved extremely hard for the Wei army to breach. As the Chinese say, if one man guards the pass, 10,000 are unable to pass through. So Shu was not overly worried about Wei's assaults. After more than two months, the Wei army had still failed to break through the mountain pass. When food supplies ran low for his troops, Zhong Hui considered withdrawing. Then Ding Ai devised a plan for a surprise attack. Deng Ai, as the Cao Wei's old man, he analyzed the situation and concluded that the Yin Gong Jian Men Guan was not effective. So he decided to retreat, hide in the mountains, to cross a unknown route, to return to the Jian Men Guan from the east side. 到当时的福城，也就是现在四川的绵阳那一带，如果能够夺取福城，就可以由福城南下直逼成都。如果这样的话，他既可以奇袭姜维的后方，还可以和中会大军形成前后夹击之势。It was already October, and Western China was freezing cold. Going around the Jinmen Pass, Ding Ai led a strike force through unguarded Yinping. The route, 350 kilometers long, cut across uninhabited terrain. Ding Ai had his men cut paths along the high mountains and build bridges. It was a perilous but inspired undertaking. After 20 days, he and his men showed up at Jiang'o, where the Shu troops were so shocked that they surrendered.
The surprise attack disrupted all of Shu's defenses. Following their capture of Zhang You, the Wei armies pushed on to Mianyang, the gateway to Chengdu. Xin Gang is a craftsman in Mianzhu, Sichuan province. He is making a New Year woodcut print based on a design that is hundreds of years old. Many Mianzhu New Year prints depict classic stories about the Three Kingdoms. Their most common subject is probably the heroic battle of Mianzhu. When Deng Ai launched a surprise attack at Mianyang, he was resisted by Shu forces led by Zhuge Zheng. Zhuge Zheng and his son, Zhuge Sheng, retreated to Mianzhu, where both were killed. To commemorate them, people in Mianzhu built an ancestral hall for the heroic father and son. Three generations of the Zhuge family had sacrificed much for Shu but they could not prevent an inept emperor from losing the state to its rival. After capturing Mianzhu, Deng Ai led his troops towards the Shu capital, Chengdu. This threw Liu Shan and his officials into confusion. Commoners had no choice but to flee the city. Liu Shan surrendered to Deng Ai. Deng Ai is the one 使他在军事上取得了极大的主动only 43 years after its foundation, the state of Shu fell in a most dramatic way. At Wuho Temple in today's Chengdu, statues of Yu Bei and Zhuge Liang commemorate the first Shu emperor and his chancellor. The statue of Yu Bei is in the center of the hall. To its left is that of his grandson, Liu Chun. But there is no statue to Liu Bei's right. The niche once held a statue of Yu Shan, but it has been installed and removed many times over because Shu was conquered during his reign. Even today, 1800 years later, people still call Yu Shan the weak and inept emperor. Yu Shan was sent to the Wei capital, Yu Yang. He was enfiefed as the Duke of Anle, literally the Duke of Peace and Comfort. One day, Sir Ma Zhao invited Liu Shan and his followers to a feast with traditional Shu music and dancing. The former Shu officials were sad, but when asked if he also missed his former state, Liu Shan replied, I enjoy life here and do not think of Shu at all. Gungbobi 这个是一种活命哲学那什么都谈不上 The conquest of Shu augmented Sima Zhao's political capital. After his death, his son Sima Yen 
inherited his title as king of Jin. A few months later, in December 265 AD, Sima Yan forced the young Wei emperor, Cao Huang, to abdicate. In his place, he declared himself emperor. He is known to history by his posthumous title, Emperor Wu of Jin. His dynasty became known as the Western Jin. With the conquest of Shu, the founding of a new dynasty and the high morale of its armies, it seemed logical for the Western Jin to invade its last rival, the state of Wu, and unify China. But Emperor Wu of Jin decided to show of such campaigns for the time being. Tamangongo 越过天堑消灭孙吴，有畏难情绪。第三，在一个时期内，孙吴政权还是比较稳固的，就没有给他提供啊敌军内乱这么一个机会。Like a crouching tiger, the Western Jin awaited the perfect opportunity. Meanwhile, the newly enthroned Emperor of Wu, Sun Hao, governed with apparent wisdom and benevolence. He gave relief to the poor and set precious birds free. But Sun Hao soon revealed his cruel nature, dashing the hopes both of his court officials and the people of Wu. Fear enveloped the Wu court. Against his minister's advice, Sun Hao ordered palaces to be built in the Wu capital, Jianye. As a result, the people were heavily exploited and the treasury drained. Sun Hao also ordered his officials to present their teenage daughters to him for selection as concubines. Those who were not selected were allowed to marry. Daily banquets held in the Wu palace could be life-threatening for officials. Closely monitored at all times, they could be tortured if they ever said or did anything deemed to be wrong. Sun Hao's inhumane rule provoked continual waves of peasant uprisings. One rebellion brought hundreds of thousands of common people to within about 15 kilometers of Jianye. Many, including some of the Wu imperial family, fled north to the state of Jin. Reports of the state of Wu's internal troubles reached the Western Jin court. In 279 AD, 15 years after the dynasty's inauguration, Generals Du Yu and Wang Jun again advocated war against Wu. But high-ranking officials such as Jia Chung opposed the war, arguing that the border was unstable. The two factions engaged in heated debate. This time, Emperor Wu of Jin flew with the hawks. Impatient with arguments for peace, he ordered mobilization for an expedition against the state of Wu. In November 279 AD, the Jin army, divided into six forces, attacked Wu by various land and river routes. Jia Chung had been named commander-in-chief but Du Yu and Wang Jun were actually in charge of the attacking forces. The Wu forces retreated, and strategic towns such as Jiangling fell one after another. The administrators and generals guarding the towns surrendered. Everyone knew that Jin would conquer Wu.
The Jin Navy, led by Wang Jun, stood out for its boldness. Wang sailed 80,000 men on large ships down the Yangtze River from Yi Prefecture. The convoy stretched for almost 50 kilometers. The Wu Navy, shocked by Jin's overwhelming force, quickly lost control. The Jin fleet continued its offensive downstream, taking Xiaoko and Wu Chang. It then pressed on relentlessly to the Wu capital, Jianye. Like his Shu counterpart, Yu Shan, Emperor Sun Ha simply surrendered. With the fall of Jianye, the Western Jin Dynasty had reunified China. Sun Hao and his clan were also escorted to the Jin capital, Luoyang. But unlike Yu Shan, who did not miss his motherland of Shu, Sun Hao kept the pride of a former emperor of the state of Wu. One day, at an imperial gathering, Emperor Wu of Jin seated Sun Ha beside him and remarked, For a long time I had this seat set for you. Sun Ha responded, I too had a seat in Jin Ye for your imperial majesty. Three years later, in 284 AD, Sun Ha died a mysterious death in Luoyang. Twelve years earlier, Wu Shang had passed away also in Luo Yang. The former Emperor of Wei, Cao Huang, died in Shu Chang in 302 AD, late in the Western Jin period. Luo Yang has experienced countless wars throughout his 4,000 year history. So today, it is hard to find traces of the Western Jin dynasty here. The city has served as the capital of 13 dynasties. It witnessed the split of the unified Eastern Han Empire into the three states of Wei, Wu, and Shu. Sixty years later, it saw the end of the turbulent Three Kingdoms period and the re-emergence of a unified China. That unity, however, was at best Brief. Go Bin is an art teacher at Lua Young Teachers College. He is conducting historical research on a famous Western Jin landscape in order to depict it in a painting. Chinese 文献记载啊，诗词歌赋啊，从我以个人的感受来和古人对话。坐坐，没事。你们俩有没有一下？就是你吃饭这附近有没有金谷园？金谷园。Spring at Jinggu Garden was one of eight well-known scenes of Luo Yang dating from Emperor Wu's reign. The painting depicted this famous garden in all its glory. 看看，就看看是农村这种看南嘴，是一家改房子，是一家是讲公章。As Gobin conducted interviews and researched further, the garden began to take shape in his mind. It was a luxurious park built by the wealthy aristocrat and former court official, Shi Chong. He lived an exceedingly lavish life, entertaining eminent guests every day at garden banquets. At this time, the Western Jin Dynasty was rich and prosperous. 
Expecting lasting peace, Emperor Wu of Jin ordered regional militias to be disbanded. Following the Zhou dynasty's precedent, he enfiefed the imperial clan. Emperor Wu used the nine-rank civil service system to promote the interests and power of aristocrats and high-ranking officials. It was said that during his reign, the upper ranks included no poor people, while in the lower, there were no powerful families. During the Kei Kung era of Emperor Wu's rule between 280 and 289 AD, social stability and material abundance ushered the Western Jin into an era of prosperity. But the growing luxury of the emperor and his highly favored court officials signaled the onset of decadence. The founding emperor of a reunified China lost his sense of purpose. He focused on feasting and enjoying women rather than on important state affairs. With more than 10,000 beautiful women in the palace precinct, it is said that he was unable to choose. So he rode in a canopied cart drawn by goats, and wherever the goats would stop, so would he. Because of this, many of the women planted bamboo leaves and splashed salty water outside their living quarters. Both were said to be attractive to goats. Aristocratic and wealthy families competed with each other to show off their wealth. Grand Tutor Herzung spent over 10,000 strings of cash each day on food alone, yet still lamented that nothing could give him an appetite. Like their Wei counterparts, Jin high officials and aristocrats also engaged in Qing Tan, or pure conversation, about the vanities of life and the beauty of nature. They neglected state affairs, despising diligence and dutifulness. A dissolute emperor, corrupted officials, and much Qin Tang wit quickly set the scene for the decline of the Western Jin. Dissatisfaction lurked under the cover of prosperity. The independent military forces established by enfiefed princes would also contribute to the downfall of the dynasty. Jin 而且他还孕育着二十七个王来，可以有国家，可以有军队，大国可以有军队五千人，次一点的国家可以有三千人，小国可以有一千五百人，这就埋下了祸根。Following Emperor Wu's death in 290 AD, chaos was let slip from within the imperial palace. Crown Prince Sima Zhong inherited the throne. He is posthumously known as Emperor Hui meaning benevolent, although simple-minded would have been more appropriate. He became the puppet of his wife, Empress Jia Nanfeng, who soon took control. She plotted to turn the Sema clan against itself and even murdered Emperor Wei's own crown prince. But her tyrannical behavior roused discontent among the ministers and princes. In 300 AD, the Prince of Jia, Sema Lun, attacked the capital and killed Empress Jia. A key event in the War of the Eight Princes. At one time or another, from 291 to 306 AD, eight princes who had been enfiefed by Emperor Wu took part in this rolling internecine conflict. Yanjunda 
，就是黄河流域的，呃，汉族人民，也其实也包括非汉族人民，都受到了极其严重的灾难。这样，同时也就给北方的少数民族，啊，进入中原，创造了这么一个机会。When the dust finally settled, hundreds of thousands had perished, and the Jin heartlands had been devastated. The once bustling capital, Luoyang, was in disarray. Jin's social order disintegrated as large numbers of people fled from fighting and natural disasters in their native lands. Provinces and commanderies lacked the arms and armies to deal with the tide of refugees and bandits. Social problems like magma trapped underground erupted in widespread uprisings. In 299 AD, an uprising of refugees broke out in Yizhou. In 306, Li Xiong, son of the refugee leader Li Te, declared himself first prince, then, in 307, emperor of Chengdu. The Western Jin dynasty was disintegrating. So much internal turmoil made it possible for many of the nomadic tribes residing within Jin to plot their independence. The first to rise up was Liu Yuan. As a Xiongnu noble, Liu Yuan lived in Luoyang. He had studied Chinese historical annals, military strategies, and Confucian classics, so he was well versed in Chinese culture. During the War of the Eight Princes, he was offered and accepted the position of Grand Chan Yu of the five Xiongnu tribes. In 304 AD, Liu Yuan founded the Xiongnu state of Han deliberately recalling the great dynasty of the same name. Over the ensuing century or so, nomadic tribes residing in the west, north, and northeast of the Western Jin, the Xiongnu, Xianbei, Jie, Jiang, and Di, established many independent kingdoms. Collectively, they are known as the Wuhu, the Five Barbarians. As Liu Yuan's power grew, Several rebel generals who were resisting Jin rule chose to unite under his banner. One such general was Xie Le, a former slave of Jia ethnicity, who would play a critical role in the campaigns against the Western Jin. In 311 AD, Xie's cavalry surrounded the Jin army at Ningping and massacred more than 100,000 men. Shortly after, Che Le, Wang Mi, and Liu Yao attacked the Jin capital, Luoyang, and Liu Yao captured Chang'an. The last Jin emperor surrendered in a most humiliating way. Riding in a goat-drawn cart, his back and shoulders bared, the imperial jade seal in his mouth. His posthumous name, Min, fittingly means sorrow. The Western Jin Dynasty had fallen after only 37 years. This long-term war, uh, just caused this one is the Xi Jin Dynasty, its extraordinary success. Then is the Luoyang area, the Huang River, the economy is collapsing. The large number of people suffered a huge disaster. They couldn't live there. This caused the rise of Chinese Hanzhou. 以洛阳为中心的中原汉人大规模南迁，按一户五口人计算，当时人口是七百万。如果七百万就迁走了九十万，迁走了八分之一。更重要的是，这部分人他是文化程度最高，就是他是呃国土周围的这样子中原汉人，文化程度最高，经济最发达。这个生产力啊，生产技术都非常高，是这样一批南迁的，南迁到南南迁去了。这个从此以后
，就是中华民族文化的中心也难签了。In Yanshe, less than 40 kilometers from Yuoyang, a monument commemorates the southward migration of the Hakka people from the Central Plains. During the late Western Jin, many prominent families and common people fled south from the imperial capital. The north had become a battlefield for the various nomadic tribes competing for power and dominance. The tripartite division of the Three Kingdoms period lasted for 60 years. Under the prosperous but beleaguered Western Jin Dynasty, China was reunified, but its unity endured for less than 40 years. The collapse of the Western Jin led to another era of fragmentation. This time it lasted much longer and the area of contention was much greater. China would remain divided for nearly 300 years until the Sui dynasty reunified the country once again. <laughs> 